morning, last day of November, as we start the climb to end this year that has been eventful. Uh, I'm really impressed that I've seen several people online encouraging themselves and their communities to look for the positives of 2020. It's human nature to look for the, sorry, <laughs> the stress of everything and to the negatives of everything, but it also is just as important to find the positives. Um, this article that came up staggering under the weight of it all is talking about uh, how we hold stress in our bodies and I, I like because it links how our yoga practice is all about shifting from unconscious slapping our body down sitting in the car going to work doing all these things to the conscious and being aware of how our stress and our mental um, and emotional health does store itself in our body so I, I'm gonna read you a little bit of this we're trapped in a seamless web woven from floatsome and jetsome of your life. It's anybody's guess just how your boss's need for an answer right now, smack in the middle of little Julie's piano recital, your rent arithmetic, and your father's imminent more, oh, imminent move, your father has dementia, uh, produce your current state of mind. Since you don't have a clue where this runway train is headed, anxiety lurks in the background. So the more balls we have in the air, the more these other coping mechanisms creep in. They're not always our choice. There's nothing unusual about a father succumbing to dementia, children taking lessons after school, or a boss texting when they feel like it, or taking an extra course to advance your career. But when you simmer them all in a pot and add a dash of road rage that's going to probably happen this time of year, between the busyness of everyone, the COVID stress of people, and the fact that it's just a couple weeks before Christmas, um, a looming tax deadline, running out of toner, or the last page of your report, and a creak in your neck, and something in our physical body usually kind of puts us over the edge. You're staggering under the weight of it all, and with each new demand, whether it's placed on you by circumstance or you generate it yourself, the initial straw falls on the camel's back. So for some of us, it's something completely unrelated, not stressful, that kind of makes us crack under all this pressure. Each additional straw finds its proverbial pile, and soon the famous last straw adds its minuscule grace note and when all hell breaks loose. It's a lack of awareness in our part that allows these pressures to build to unsustainable levels. So, we talk about it, go within, notice the, notice the connection. With children, we talk about what's that feeling in your stomach, um, starting to listen to the cues in our body that we're approaching this um, about to blow level. Mindfulness practice doesn't teach us ins and outs of stress management, but it helps us develop awareness. So looking for those cues, good and bad, in your body. We might find that we are showing up more in our own lives, noticing both the magnolia tree when it starts to bloom and the hurtful thing that we're about to say, the dark and the light. Becoming better acquainted with our own mind helps us recognize our patterns to overcommit and overpromise, which keeps us stretched too thin. Instead of blowing past the early warning signs of stress, such as a knot in your gut, or your voice getting hoarse, or maybe your voice gets raised, or I get red here, I can just feel it happening, um, we start to see these body cues as allies. They're there to help us and tip us off before we do reach the boiling point. They are signals to disengage from what we're doing. Take a mini break, or in uh, trails we talk about, take five. Five breaths, you could even switch it down to three. Even close your eyes, count to three, or stare at something while you're staring at the person who's causing this stress, maybe, and count to three quietly in your head. Instead of blowing your press, um, these are signals to disengage what you're doing. Take a mini break and come back and address our circumstances with an open, clearer mind, and hopefully a calmer mind. Heating these cues can be the first step towards lightening the load on the overburdened camel. Uh, most of us want a solution. We want to get anxiety and stress off our back. If you get an infection, you go to the doctor. We're on the mend. Why doesn't it work that way with mindfulness? We can go see a doctor, but we still have to do the work. If you practice with a goal in mind, if I do this, my anxiety is going to disappear. An objective outside the present moment and this circumstance. We might as well be chasing butterflies when we think we need to be stacking firewood. Hmm. When it comes time to mindfulness practice, we approach this approach doesn't hold water. We can't subtract manual labor from the process. If we hang on to our goal orientation through all of it, we'll end up killing the goose that laid the golden egg. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna skip past a bunch of this and read you what I really want. When we're trying to do too many things at once, it's easy to get overloaded. Simplicity 
whether it's in our physical um, asana or poses or it's in our thought process or we're trying to disengage from too many thoughts and we come back to actually look at the mandala behind me how complex the outside is but as you zero into the center there's one dot so think of your life and your brain as all those details and petals of that mandala and then we come into the simple center focus on one spot it's easy to get overloaded. Simplicity is always available to us, but we, when we rush ahead, we miss it over and over again. Simple situations can become complicated quickly. On the way home, you stop at the grocery store to pick up one thing for dinner and while troubleshooting a problem at work at the same time. Later, you're ready to cook supper and realize you forgot the whole thing that you went to the store to get. So after giving yourself a good swift mental kick, you head back to the store. You're busy beating yourself up that you for your inattentiveness that you don't notice the school zone and sure enough a police officer pulls you over. So see how this multitasking, not being present, not in the moment can unfortunately snowball. I'd be curious to see how many car accidents are caused because people had too many things going on in their mind and it wasn't, they weren't present in that simple act of driving. The simplicity of mindfulness can help thin out our dust cloud and interrupt our perpetual mental tapestry weaving project, even if it's just for a moment. As we're rushing down rabbit holes, a moment of mindfulness creates a spark of sanity in the midst of a barrage of thoughts. So again, think of that lotus, so many pieces to that picture, and then it comes down to one simple thought. As we begin to become more familiar with the practice, we become less mesmerized by the content of our thoughts, like so many, and how what they're about. As we begin um, the storyline and more interest in the fact that we can actually recognize the whole picture and recognize the thoughts. Don't be mad that you have them, just recognize that you're being consumed by them. Gradually over time, as our connection to the now strengthens, we become less invested in our thought process. More and more, we stick with simplicity. And I like to think of um, when we're doing our physical practice, I want to think more of the sensations in my body as my guidance. And the more I can become present, and some of you are amazing at this, the more I'm noticing the physical body, all those layers of thoughts, think about an artichoke and all those outer leaves, they fall away. As we begin to appreciate simplicity, trimming back unnecessary and frivolous activities starts to come along on its own accord. We don't require as many things, materially, activity-wise, and psychologically. This natural thinning out process allows space into our previously crowded life and mind. And you've heard me say this before, COVID has created this cleaning house. It's really funny that the con, the timing of the Marie Condor and the um, simplicity movement and the minimalist movement came pretty much just before COVID. And I feel like COVID was like the final push to keep us present and simplify what we're doing. This is so the holidays, what we need to buy, use what we already have in our home and simplify everything, thoughts, activities. Now, having said that, I know some of you are working harder, longer hours than you ever have before, and that's good in terms of economics, but I hope that you will take the time to find the simplicity, especially maybe we'll be grounded in my snow soon, so we won't have a choice. So today I wanted to take the practice to the floor, and instead of rushing through that as a warm up for our physical body, I want us to use it as moving meditation. I want us to go on the floor, do our normal morning physical practice, but I want us to really take note of the physical sensations and how it makes you feel. Maybe you're able to go to the next level and notice some people, it evokes emotions because of the way we physically move our body. So without further ado, let's come to the mat. And for some of you who are more fascinated by busy muscular effort classes, I apologize, but maybe this class is actually for you. Coming onto the mat, bum towards the heels. The process of coming to the floor becomes just as important as being on the floor. So take a look at your feet one or two fist width apart, maybe lift your toes, spread them, and press the ball of the foot down, then the toes down, feel the heel press down, my thighs are close together but my knees are wide, and then I'm gonna to start to try to lay my lower back down. My elbows have to bend for this to happen, and maybe I'll bring those elbows in closer. And I'm gonna lay the lower back down and come onto my bent elbows. The forearms press down. It reminds me of when we're in Sphinx, that forearm becoming the foundation. Chin to chest. You can do lay a little bit more of the back down, but not the upper back. Look at your belly. If 
pubic bone, thighs. Now my arms, I pull them out from supporting me because now my muscular effort has to support me. Chin to chest, now the place behind my heart is on the floor. And I'm gonna take my time rolling down one vertebrae at a time. So now I felt my shoulder blades hit the floor, the shoulders go wide. Back so the shoulders come to the floor. Oh, I can feel the strain in my neck. Maybe even I'm gonna support it. Interlace your hands behind your neck. Chin, chest still. Elbows come together. Lay the shoulders back down again. Maybe you're able to slowly open your elbows. Oh. Take a breath here. Ah, oh, maybe come into cactus for a moment. Arms by up to the side, palms turned up. Press your nails into the floor. Engage your lower belly and press the lower back into the floor. And pausing for a moment. What do you feel? What's the first twinge of resistance? You want to look for that sensation of surrender. And I can gently rock my knees a little side to side. I don't need a lot. Just to become aware of how the tailbone feels on the floor. And then arms by your side. Knees can stay bent. And we're going to take five long breath rounds here. We want to think about each sense as a superpower. So tuning in, the sense of touch. What does the sensation feel of your skin pressing onto your floor or your mat? Maybe your mat is a different texture than the floor that's under the mat. So you have two sensations to notice. Press the nails wide, press them into the floor, notice that hard resistance to the fleshy warmth of your organic body. Forearms press down, biceps and fleshy arms press down, shoulder blades press down. Heaviness and the boniness of my head presses down, so I'm noticing these contrasts. Can you press the lower back down further? Now notice the temperature in the room on your skin. Some of you like to practice with many layers, and some of you are like me, and you want to have cool air on your skin. So that's another contrast. Take a big breath in. Notice your own scent and the scent of the room. Maybe you have a ritual and you burn incense. Maybe you use scented products when you take a shower so that that becomes part of your ritual, tuning in the sense of smell. Lately, I've been using some perfumes that I like. After I have a shower, I might even brush some perfume in my hair so that even though I'm not seeing anybody, I'm still having a sensual experience. Scent, you will experience, haha. -ha. I'm not saving it for a rainy day, or sorry, saving it for a fancy experience. Notice the smell, notice the temperature, notice the touch. Next, what do I hear? Maybe you hear my music. Maybe you have music on. Maybe you can hear the activities of the life in the home or the building you're in. The flush of the water in the pipes, the tap tap of the claws of your pet on the hardwood floor, the soft layers of a discussion in another room. Maybe you hear the traffic of your community rushing by. All these layers you have a choice. Eyes can be closed. I still can see the red of the light pressing through my eyelids. Or maybe your eyes are softly open and you're softly gazing at something. So we're using that sense as well. And now that we're already tuned into all these senses, let's do five breath rounds. Inhale one. Pause. Exhale. On the exhale, can you ground further towards the floor? Surrender further so the flesh is heavy and relaxed. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three. Exhale. Inhale four. Exhale. Finally, inhale five. 
connect to capacity. Pause and exhale. Let's bring right leg to chest, no hands. Press the lower back down. My right ankle is relaxed. Arms are heavy. Inhale, one. Exhale, drop the right foot. Pause. Inhale, left knee to chest, no hands. Inhale. Exhale, left foot to the floor. Notice the feeling of the floor. Hopefully your foot is naked and you can feel the texture of your mat. Inhale, right knee to chest. Whole back body presses into the floor. And as you breathe out, slowly release right foot to the floor. Eyes are still closed. Inhale, left thigh to chest, no hands. Exhale, foot to the floor. Slowly, mindfully, release. Right knee comes into chest as you breathe in. Notice that the body's loosening, softening, and maybe more of your back is pressing the floor. And this action is getting easier. Exhale, right foot to the floor. Pause. Inhale, left knee to chest, as deeply as you can, no hands. Exhale. This is your moving meditation. Right knee to chest, inhale. Foot is soft and relaxed. Pressing lower back into the floor as the thigh comes in, depending on your hips. Exhale, right foot to the floor. Maybe start with the ball of your foot and slowly roll down, pressing the heel of the whole sole down. As you press your feet down, what happens in your lower abdomen, your groin muscles? Left knee lifts into chest, no hands. Exhale, follow the foot down, and eventually the heel rolls down too. Inhale, chest, right thigh in. Exhale, right leg down. Inhale, left thigh in, hold. Now flex the foot. Oh, what happened in that glute and thigh and quad? Exhale, left foot down. Keep it flexed. Don't lose that muscular effort and attentiveness. Right thigh in, flex. What happens to your lower back? Are you able to press it more deeply into the earth? Right foot lands. Let's take the soles of the feet together and let the knees fall wide. We're gonna assess the hip and the groin muscles and how they connect, especially if you sit all day in your job. Let's take three breaths here. My arms haven't moved. Spread the nails, press the nails on the floor. Engage the glutes and groin to center is almost impossible because the knees are falling outwards. Inhale, one. Exhale. Can you soften a little on the exhale? Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Close your knees. No hands. Feet are back on the floor. Maybe your arms are touching. Left thigh to chest, then right. Let's bring the thighs together, soles to, or arches together. <sighs> Two breaths here. Lower back presses into the floor. Inhale one. Exhale. Your feet are still flexed. Inhale two. Exhale. And inhale three. Exhale. Let's tilt over onto the left hip flesh. My upper body doesn't move. Press the thighs together because they're going to want to pull apart. Head gently looks a little to the right. We're going to hold here for three breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Knees to center. to the right, you're going to look to the left. Inhale one, 
exhale, close your eyes, shoulders are heavy, inhale two, exhale, inhale three, exhale back to center, head comes back to center. Now, you have a choice, we're going to take the knees even deeper, hovering, this is going to take muscular stillness, or you can take them to the floor or put a block. Inhale one, you're gonna to look to the right. Exhale, inhale two, <laughs> exhale, inhale three, exhale, back to center. Knees to the right, as low as you want or to the floor or to the block, flex. Look to the left, inhale one, exhale, inhale two, Exhale, and inhale three. Exhale, back to center. This time, we're gonna take those knees to the floor or a block, everybody. Knees to the floor on the left. Can you keep your right shoulder down? Turn and look to the ceiling or to the right. Three breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale, and inhale, three. Exhale, back to center. Oh. Knees to the floor on the right. Left shoulder heavy, turn and look to the left. Inhale, one. Exhale, inhale, two. Exhale, and inhale, three. Exhale, back to center. Oh yeah. This time, the hands come to the right leg, left leg to the floor. Pause here, hips are squared off, or slide the left leg half bent, so there's a bend in my knee, or all the way. Oh yeah. Without consciously pulling it in, you just have the weight of your hands either on the shin, or behind the thigh. Pause. Feet are soft this round. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Left hand takes right knee over. Single leg spinal twist. Pause, inhale one, exhale, inhale two, let your head roll to the right, exhale, and on the third breath, going as deep in the twist as you like, but keeping the right shoulder down, inhale one, exhale, back to center, thighs to chest, Switch, left leg in, right leg is foot to the floor, knee bent, half straight or fully straight. We're gonna stay here without flexing or anything, just using the gravity and the weight of his hands on the left shin or behind the left thigh. Inhale, one. Exhale, chin to the ceiling. Inhale, two. Exhale, inhale, three. Exhale. Right hand takes left knee over. Single leg spinal twist. Maybe let your head roll to the left or you're looking to the ceiling, depending on your neck. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale, back to center. Knees to chest. Knees fall wide and just support the knees and pause here. Three breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale, inhale, two. Exhale, inhale, three. Exhale, 
option to add a little more pressure or consciously you're going to press them a little wider. Option to walk your hands down the shins, come into a wide double leg window leaving pose. And pause here, three breaths. Ultimately, we're in a soft squat, but on our back. Feet are flexed or pointed or both. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Set up for happy baby. Legs are wide, hands behind the thighs. Counter pressure just a little. Let's take three breaths here. We're letting our hips slowly open. Think about a tulip slowly releasing the outer shell, or even a rose opening slowly over a course of time. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale, inhale three. Exhale, option to go a little deeper. Maybe pull the thighs towards you. Maybe walk your hands up to the ankles or maybe coming into full happy baby. Inhale one. Exhale, inhale two, so tight. Exhale and inhale three. Exhale. Soles of the feet touching. Pause. You can grab the blades or hold your ankles. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three. Exhale. Releasing soles of the feet together, blades together, cutting into the floor, soles together, knees out to the side. Option to place your hands on your belly, your heart, or cactus. Three breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Notice each time we move the shape of our body, you might have a different sensation. What I've also noticed is we attach our ego to those sensations. So if it feels easy, two sensations. You can be frustrated, hey, this is easy, or B, you can almost gloat and be happy, oh, I'm good at this. If it's hard, our ego usually doesn't want to do things that are hard or uncomfortable. So instead of noticing the edge of the discomfort and that slowly it starts to soften and fall away, we get mad. Can you find it as a learning opportunity? Next time you move your body into a position, doesn't feel easy and there is some discomfort I want you to come to that edge and can you breathe and soften accept and maybe surrender a little two more breaths inhale one exhale inhale two exhale good job you guys are doing well and I know for busy people this slow Mindful practice might be driving you nuts. Close your legs. Oh, thighs to chest. One, then two. Let's not go immediately into little boat. Press the legs together, palms on your knees, pulling them as deeply as you can into your thigh, in thighs to belly, and pressing your lower back down. Three breaths here. Inhale, one. Toes are touching. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale and inhale three. Exhale. Can you grab your strap? Let's take both feet in the air and pause here. I'm going to put the heat of my hands on the back of my hamstrings because that's what we're going to be working with next. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale and inhale three. Exhale. Okay, I'm going to interlace both hands behind my right leg so that when I lower my left leg bent or straight, I've supported the right leg. Oh. Let's extend the left leg while you're supporting the right leg and pause here. Inhale one. Notice any discomfort in the back of the right leg. That's your learning tool. Inhale two. 
exhale, and inhale three. Option to massage or stay still, that hamstring. Strap to the ball of the right foot. Pausing here. Actually, let's all pause in stillness. The strap is holding our leg up. Close your eyes. Inhale, one. Exhale, inhale, two. Exhale, and inhale, three. Exhale. Both straps in the right hand. Let's go halfway out to the left, to the right. Even though you can do more, I want you to control it half. Left hand's on left hip flexor, and just heat your heat of your hand is helping that hip flexor. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale and inhale three. Exhale. Option to let that leg fall a little wider. Oh yeah. Pause. Left arm out to a T with your palm turned up. Three breaths here. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. And inhale three. Exhale. Leg to the sky. Strap into the left hand. Right arm to a T. Taking that leg as far as it feels good, come to your edge, acknowledge the discomfort towards the left, and pause. Inhale one, exhale, inhale two, exhale, and inhale three, exhale, back to center. Let's mindfully disassemble this shape. Knee bends, both knees come to chest, Right foot lands, left foot in the air. Interlace your hands behind the belly of that thigh. Left leg is in the air, relax. Right leg slides straight. Pause for three breaths here. Inhale, one. Smile, exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale, inhale, three. Exhale. Now I'm going to take my strap to the ball of my left foot. It's going to hold the leg in the air. You can add a little bit of counter pressure, but you don't stir the leg. We're just going to pause. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Both straps in the left hand. Right hand to right hip, I'm only going half to the left that we can. Pause. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale and inhale three. Exhale. Okay, now you're allowed to let that leg fall as wide as it feels good. Right arm to a T, palms turned up, three breaths here. Inhale one. Exhale, inhale two, exhale, and inhale three, exhale, taking that leg back up to the sky, straps into the right hand, and the left arm to a T, coming across the midline, you're going to take three breaths here, inhale one, exhale, inhale two, Exhale, and inhale, three. Exhale, get rid of the strap. Thighs to chest, little bow. Last position we're gonna do. How did the time go so quickly? We're gonna do our thread the needle, but passively. So arms soft, 45, palms turned up. Knees bent, one or two fists width apart. My soles are on the floor. Right foot flexes onto left knee and open that gate. So right knee presses to the wall behind you. Ooh. Two breaths here. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. And inhale, three. Exhale. Lift the left knee. 
Oh. Right knee presses away. So we're opening this gate, squaring this off. Sometimes it's similar to this sensation of fire logging. Feet flex. Three breaths here. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. And inhale three. Exhale. Left foot down. Right foot down. Switch. Left foot flexes onto right knee and open that gate. Left knee presses away. Three breaths here. <clears throat> Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. And inhale three. Exhale. Right thigh towards you. Oh, left knee opens the gate. Three breaths here. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale, and last one. Inhale, three, left knee presses away. Exhale, knees into chest, no hands. Rocking side to side or circles. Allow yourself to roll over onto your side, whatever side feels more natural. Your arm becomes a pillow, and we'll take two breaths here. Inhale, one. Exhale, inhale, two. Exhale, and inhale, three. Exhale. Slowly pressing yourself upright. Come into a seated position for our final reading today. And, oh, let's read these cards. We used to call these the tiny fawn cards that were very challenging for some of us to be able to see. And so, especially with our beautiful candlelight, I miss that. Uh, unfortunately, we have to keep this room really bright for you to see everything. Oh, this reminds me of Yana. The blessing of questioning. Examine and identify any belief that stems from irrational fear. Ask yourself, do I still need this? If the answer is no, then replace with a trusting, more loving belief. Blessings flow to you as soon as you do this. Set yourself free. So maybe the first job is actually to write a list of what are your fears right now. They can be immediate, COVID related, they could be financial, they can be long term, they can be short term. And maybe go through that list and see how can I eliminate even one fear today. Thank you so much for your effort. Have a beautiful day. Even if it's going to be dark, maybe that's for you to get some home things done. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.